supposed to lie. <laughs> In case you didn't know that. You can Google Vidibo and find out how much I post on videos. You could Google Wordibo combined and see how much I write a lot. You could Google or do a search engine, Bing or whatever, of Michael James Stone and discover how much I blog a lot. Matter of fact, I like to talk about God a lot. Because you see, I fell in love a long time ago. And the more that I get to know, the more I seem to grow in the knowledge of not just who I love, but how many different ways I could express that love to him. And so I really try hard to find and be a part of those people that love to talk about God, that love to talk to God, that love to relate personally Jesus in a way that maybe others don't know or understand completely. You know, I mean, I've talked about things like, you know, plantings and, you know, ministry things and things that are obvious, you know, that most people would, you know, say, oh, well, that's just right out of the Bible. But then I've talked about hummingbirds, which unfortunately recently, because of the cold snap, I think my hummingbirds have gone to nest or left with the rest to head to the south or wherever they go, as hummingbirds do. They migrate. But right now, my hummingbirds, they're just not, they haven't been coming around lately, you know, I kind of miss them. But God always sent those hummingbirds for times I really needed to hear from the Lord, you know, and it's kind of neat, you know, in a personal way. Because I love seeing those tokens and expressions of love that God gives me. Kind of like recently, I, I was having issues with how I was going to do my plantings, you know, and I was carrying them around in like a container, kind of like this. You know, this white little grill thing, you know, that I could get pretty much cheap, you know, from used stores, but they weren't that cheap. So I couldn't really find anything free until I found another dumpster that I could dive in. <laughs> yes, I'm a dumpster diver. I call it my uh, missionary mining. There we go. Dumpster diving is missionary mining. You know, when you don't have the money, what do you do? You mine for buried treasure <laughs> in a dumpster. So I use, you know, the things that most people refuse or use as refuse that I can use for, in this case, plantings, you know, ministry things. Kind of neat, you know, the way I'm able to, you know, take a bowl of noodles, you know, that's 99 cents, and make it into a container for plants to grow in. You know, and I reuse them over and over and over again for all kinds of things. <laughs> And it's not really being kind of like hoarding as much as it is, I can't afford it. So, praise the Lord. God provides those things for me that I see his hand in inspiring ways for me to enjoy his presence in my life daily, every day of my life. And that's kind of why I like being with God. Because then being in God, I see the world around me from his perspective as opposed to maybe mine, which is really limited. You know, a lot of times people put on narrow blinders so that they can't see what's going on around them. But I like to think that man tends to put on down blinders because he doesn't look up to see what God is doing in the world today, especially in your world. How is God working in your world today? Is God the foremost important person in your life? Do you say like most of the scriptures say, you love the Lord your God with all your heart? Do you really? I mean, come on. How much of your day is spent talking about God? Because I know. I usually see you on the internet, don't I? And I know what you do or don't post about God. Do you really love him? She has done a good work for me. Mark 14.6 if what we call love doesn't take us beyond ourselves, it is not really love. If we have the idea that love is characterized as cautious, wise, sensible, shrewd, and never taken to extremes, we have missed the true meaning. This may describe affection, and it may bring us to a warm feeling, but it is not a true and accurate description of love. 
Have you ever been driven to do something for God, not because you have felt it was useful or your duty to do so, or that there was something in it for you, but simply because you love Him? You know, kind of like just said, I love you. I knew God hurt. Or something dumb, you know, even more so. Or you just pray. Have you ever realized that you can give things to God that are of value to Him? Or are you just sitting around daydreaming about the greatness of His redemption and the preponderance of your religious experience? And while I'm neglecting all the things you could be doing for Him, that He might want to hear from you. Thanksgiving. Thanks, God. Or even going about your day doing the little things that I mentioned of inspiration that you see God his hand in it and you give him credit for it as he reveals more and more of his nature in how he's using it to be a part of your day how he wants to be involved in your day and you just need to make opening your eyes and ears to hear what it is in your doing of your normal routines that you can involve God in and then bless him with what you're doing. It's an interesting perspective because it's a reality of Christian life. If I'm not referring, oh, I'm not referring to work which could be regarded as divine and miraculous, but ordinary, simple, human things, you know, the practical things, that would be evidence to God that you're totally surrendered to Him, but nobody else can see. Things you're willing to do that are hidden, that you've obeyed Him in what He's shown you to do, and no one else knows. Have you ever created what Mary of Bethany created in the heart of the Lord Jesus? She has done a good work for me. You know, broken the oil over His feet. You know, kind of like anonymously prayed for someone because God said to we just done some little thing some little token you know some people say their Shabbos is one way of doing that or lighting a candle or you know, saying a prayer or maybe easier than that simply you know blessing your food I like to say helping a little old lady across the street you know and as much as you've done it to the least of my brethren you've done it unto me well sure those are the obvious works but what are the not so obvious things that God wants you to demonstrate your love to him. I can think of one. Have you ever thought of this? Jesus said that do this unto me. Do this in remembrance of me. And as often as you do it, you declare my coming again until I come in glory. This is my body broken for you. This is my blood shed for you. Have you ever thought of just doing a communion between you and God alone, without all the worship songs, without all the music and you know accoutrements, without the first of the month coming around, but that every day you could take a piece of bread, a glass of wine, and spend it with God divine, that you could do it unto Jesus in remembrance of Him. I think you'd bless him. In as much as you love me, keep my commandments. There are times when it seems as if God watches to see if we will give him even small gifts of surrender just to show how genuine our love is for him. To be surrendered to God is of more value than our personal holiness. Holiness can be accomplished by anyone, but giving yourself, only you can give of yourself. Concern over our personal holiness causes us to focus our eyes on ourselves, and we become overly concerned about the way we walk, and talk, and look, and out of the fear of offending God. But perfect love casts out fear once we are surrendered to God. 1 John 4.18 we should quit asking ourselves, am I of any use? But rather, 
accept the truth that we really are not of much use to him. The issue is never of being of use, but of being of value to God himself. Once we are totally surrendered to God, he will work through us all the time if we relinquish ourselves in love to himself and choose to bless him rather than to work for him or do what we think he wants us to do rather than what we could be doing for him. When you love someone, don't you want to know what he has to say? Don't you seek to find out how to do what they like, what they enjoy, what they really, really, I mean really want to do instead of just doing it for you? You see, most of the Christian religious experience, God puts up with because he really doesn't need any of it. He's got heaven, and they worship him day and night. And we say we worship him in spirit and truth, but the reality is, no, we don't, not till we get to heaven. The part that God loves, really, is when you suddenly open your eyes to his presence and participate with him in what he is doing, as opposed to what you want to wouldn't it be nice to just kind of work with God for a while instead of working against Him?